Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I'm back tonight, not with a mech review, not with a battle report, but a painting tutorial. It's crazy. This is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but uh, I promised it, so I'm delivering. So several months ago, I uh, put together an Atlas AS7, uh, filmed the whole thing, magnetized it, drilled it out, we did some really cool mods to that, uh, and I promised that I was going to be painting it up uh, in the colors of the first Alton Mark Militia. Um, and this was basically going to be one of several mechs that was going to round out that company. So, um, tonight, what I'm going to go through is some of my tips, my tricks, my patterns that I use to paint mechs very quickly, uh, to turn over a company of mechs, you know, in just a few nights. Um, you know, and admittedly, you know, I am not the best painter in the world. So if you're looking for premium painting techniques uh, to, you know, help you win a competition, I would highly advise... Uh, check out somebody like Camo Specs. Um, Kevin did a painting tutorial. I thought that was really good as well. Um, but really tonight we're going to be focused on the assembly line, right? How can we churn out a lot of mechs really quickly? Um, so I'm going to share with you um, the supplies that I use, um, basically the, the tactics and tricks that I use. So all of that stuff is coming your way. So guys, stay tuned. Don't go away. All right, guys, so let's get this thing kicked off. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is we are going to finish up my company of Altenmark Militia mechs. Um, so I have five of them painted already. Some of them appeared on the channel uh, in a battle report. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to finish off this company. I had all these guys earmarked, um, and we'll go through them in a bit. But first, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the supplies that I use. So first and foremost, one of the supplies here is going to be Rust-Oleum flat gray primer 2x coverage, right? And you can you can get this in flat black, flat white, uh, gloss colors, semi-gloss colors, eggshell, whatever you want. It comes in just about every flavor. Um, and so I started uh, and I did these guys in gray. I probably in retrospect should have done them in white. It would have made my life easier. However, I primed the original ones in gray also, um, and so I wanted to make sure that the white, the tone came out the same. Uh, so I should have shot myself in the foot from the beginning, but you live and you learn. Um, the next thing, uh, the next supply here we'll talk about is, is the paints that I use. So as I mentioned, this is budget tech. I'm cutting, <laughs> slashing prices here. Um, basically, what I use is this stuff here. This is folk art, um, multi-surface, uh, acrylic paint and it works great on plastics. I, I use it on my 40k stuff. I've been using it forever um, and you can get a two ounce bottle of this stuff at your local craft store. You can order it online at homedepot.com. Um, you can get them all over the place. They're like two bucks for a giant two ounce thing. Um, this will last you a very very long time um, unless you're like excessively liberal with it or painting you know a giant piece of terrain. If you're painting just like miniatures um, of this scale or even 28 millimeter miniatures, um, whether it's for D&D or whatever, like this, one of these bottles will last you a very, very long time. Just keep the lid on tight. They don't dry out. And if they do, they just kind of separate um, and you can shake them up or add just a tiny bit of water and they come back to life. Your $2 is going to last you uh, a really long time. So I love these paints. Um, you know, again, it's not going to win me a golden demon. You know, they're, you know you're not going to get like excessively perfect color and crisp coverage and all these other things, but you're going to get a really good table ready miniature um, that looks great and, you know, again, didn't like burn a hole in, you know, uh, in your in your finances because, you know, a tiny little thing of paint costs you 12 bucks or whatever they cost these days. I don't even look. Um, so those are the paints that I use uh, today. So in addition to the paints, I have washes. Now washes, I, you know, I don't cheap out on. Uh, I also don't go like super premium. I use the Vallejo Game Color washes. I bought a whole set of these things um, over here. You know, there's um, browns and reds and greens and blues, all sorts of different things. Uh, it was like 20 bucks, I believe, for the set. Uh, and so that's um, that's what I use there. Those are essential. Um, 
I tried to like, you know, for, for a while I was like, you know, doing homemade washes. Like, you know, you just kind of mix some paint with water and thin it out real nice. And you know, that can work. Um, but the, the actual inks, the actual washes work so well and they bring out so much detail. Um, my advice would be don't even mess around, just get them. It, it just takes your painting to that next level, uh, makes the models look just really good in my opinion. All right, so um, other thing I use, you know, I got standard stuff here. I got like these Jones, right? I like to put my paint in there. I mean, they're easy. You can kind of scrub them and reuse them um, when you need to, um, or you just buy new ones. They're dirt cheap. Um, and then brushes. I don't, you know, buy super premium brushes. Um, I have some, you know, low Cornell and things like that. Um, but I buy a couple brands nowadays. Um, there's one brand called Princeton. Um, and I don't know, uh, I, I can't get these online, but you can get them at like the local craft store. Like we have AC Moore and Michaels out here. I don't know if that's a national chain or not, but, um, you can buy them there and you know, you'll find like these doorbuster sales where they're selling them for like a dollar a piece. Um, so, you know, whenever I'm in there, I'll just like grab a whole bunch of them. Um, and I think at most they're like maybe $3 a brush. So, you know, really not expensive. Um, and they last a long time. They actually do a pretty good job. They don't last as long as the expensive brushes, period. But at the same time, I also don't take care of my brushes. I don't, like I said, you know, I don't like wash them in special fluids when, <laughs> when I'm done painting. I just rinse them off. I clean them, you know, with water uh, and I let them air dry and like, you know, it is what it is, right? So um, the other thing I do is I buy these brushes. Uh, you can get these on Amazon. Um, I think they come in four packs. I think at one point this was a four pack, but I used one. Uh, the name of this uh, company is Zem, Z-E-M, um, and they're golden synthetic. Um, they're cheap. I think they're like seven bucks for four, something like that. And they come in all the sizes that you need, like, you know, um, zero, one, two, you know, zero, three, um, those types of things. So, and then you can also get spotters and whatnot as well. So those are the brushes, um, and that's it. You know, so basically it's a very simple set of tools here. That I'm using. The only other thing that I will note um, that I do that I find very helpful, especially in my old age, I always forget what colors I use. So I use these, you know, folk arts. There's like 42,000 different shades of red. Um, so I always document what I use. And, you know, what I'll do is when I'm painting a new company, you know, you'll start on a mech um, or just even on a palette, you know, you're just kind of painting the colors, see how they'll kind of come out. You're thinking about what scheme you want. You can nail something down. You do your first model. And you're like, yeah, this looks really good. You should write down exactly what you did. You know, what size brush, you know, how many coats, um, you know, what location of the mech you did it on, you know, all these types of things. So it really helps you remember, uh, you know, what you did. So for example, for these guys, um, what I do is I do a whole coat of white over the whole miniature, right? Um, looking at that, you can't tell that. But if, you know, I went tonight and I started painting one of these uh, unpainted ones, you know, the tone would be a little bit different if it wasn't matched. I was kind of talking about with the primer um, as well. So anyway, just little tips um, that I thought I'd pass along. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to get started. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of these tonight. However, uh, it will all be done in this video. So we're going to speed this puppy up. We're going to we're going to crank through this thing. I'm going to cut out the boring parts when I drink my coffee and we will see how many of these guys we can get done. So stay tuned. Budget Tech tutorial number one, coming up right now. All right, so here we go. Step one is getting these guys white. I mentioned it before. I probably should have primed them white, but that's okay. Uh, this is uh, a really cool white. It's a little bit of a winter white. It's got a little sort of a blue tinge to it, so it contrasts nicely um, with the red on the other half of the mech. But as I pointed out, I'm going to coat the entire mech initially in the white. So we're going to get through a few of these. Uh, I use a bigger brush here, um, you know, and I'm pretty liberal with the paint. Um, and want to make sure that you get it in all the nooks and crannies. You know, you don't want to have any gray showing through or whatever you prime them in. You know, always make sure that your base coat is um, is has good coverage, um, but also isn't too thick, right? You don't want globs of paint on there. Um, so as you can see, making good progress here in uh, in just getting that base coat done. It is a little time consuming. Um, but especially with the mechs like this crab I'm doing now, where there's a lot of detail um, and a dimension to the chassis, just want to make sure that you get, you know, from all the different angles, right? Top, bottom, left, right, right? It's three-dimensional model, so you got to make sure you hit that from all the different sides to make sure you get nice, even base coat. 
Alright, so what we're doing now is moving to a different brush because we're going to do additional coats of white but only out on that left side of the mech. So you can see the you know the left side of the mech, your visual right is is white at the final product. So we want to do a total of three coats on that side of the mech. So um, again, time consuming and you're not going to worry about necessarily cutting the edge uh, between the red and the white right now, um, but you definitely want to make sure you don't undercover the mech, right? Um, you'd rather have uh, to paint over the white than, you know, have to kind of go back and recut the edge a second time when you do the red. You'll get what I'm talking about when we get there, um, but, you know, you want, you want to kind of get down the middle, but it's okay if you are a little bit over the, uh, the halfway point than under, um, because, again, the white is much easier to cover uh, than the red is um, in that regard. All right, so now we're at a point where all of the initial mechs um, have at least one additional coat. And you can kind of see not only the mech that I'm painting, but on the, uh, on the board there, there's a very distinct sort of color difference between where you've done multiple coats of white and where you only did that one initial base coat. And, and that's really the, the effect that we're going for here. We really want to make that white pop out. Now we're going to move into the red. So this is where we really need to, you know, we're going to switch to a flat brush, um, not a round brush, and we're going to be very careful in cutting that center line. Um, you will mess up if you try, you know, any kind of quartered or halved pattern. Um, it does take time, but, you know, you want to take your time first in cutting that halfway line as best as possible, uh, and then you can worry about filling in the rest. So. You know, on something like the legs, you don't have to worry about as much because you're only really cutting, um, you know, across that hip or dare I say pelvic region. Um, it's hard for me to say that without snickering. Um, but, uh, you know, it's on the center torso, the head, right? That's where you really have to um, be especially careful because that's where people are going to be looking the most, right? Especially the top of the head because it's a tabletop game. Everybody's standing on top of, you know, looking down on the board. Um, so... You know, making sure you cut it nice and even across the head um, is very important. And you can see the atlas that I'm working on now. The head is sort of at the bottom uh, on the green cutting mat there. Um, you can see that line, uh, the red line, uh, you know, the initial cut there, uh, pretty good. So we've advanced uh, the, the timing here. We've got several of our mechs, that initial coat of red uh, done, uh, but still a lot more work to do. So this Lancelot is a good example of um, how important it is to make sure that that initial line is straight. So you can see it's a little crooked here. When you have mechs, you know, again, we talked about three-dimensional models, right? They're coming out at various angles. You want to make sure you look at the mech, um, you know, straight on from the top, from the side. Um, sometimes it's real hard, you know, they've got these jump jets jutting out to really cut a very straight line. So it, it is some trial and error. Um, you know, and all I can tell you is, is when you're doing something like this, just be patient. Um, you know, make sure that line is nice and straight because having a having a good straight line down the middle when you're when you're doing this type of pattern for whether it's Altamark Militia or really anything, um, you know, having that line being perfectly straight um, or as close to perfect as you can, you know, really makes a big difference in how well the model pops. So now we're moving on to the the leg and, and some of the extremities of that Lancelot, but you know, still trying to clean up that center line where we can. You know, just keep in mind, um, you know, when you're doing something like the leg, right, you don't have to worry about it as much. You can kind of blow through that, um, but and same thing with the arm. But it's that center torso piece really um, that that takes the most time. This video is sped up about you know 400% normal speed, so it didn't take too long. You know, maybe five, ten minutes really to kind of cut that center line really perfectly. Um, and, uh, and that's what you get there. So right now just doing uh, a second coat of red. And we're gonna do three coats of red just like we did three coats of white. Um, and you know, the, the, later, um, the later coats, you don't have to worry about that center line as much. You can just kind of get up close to it and it will look just as good. Um, so that's sort of the benefit of doing it right the first time and taking your time out of the gate to make sure that it is a nice straight line. The, the successive coats are almost 
they're still pretty they're, they're still pretty broad but I mean almost think of it like a pseudo panel highlight right you're just kind of hitting the big swaths of, uh, of armor plating and things like that to kind of bring out that color and enrich uh, the red or whatever color you're working with on the mech. Uh, if you've got a keen eye, you may have noticed some additional mechs popping up uh, on the mat here. I added a couple. Uh, just I was going through the box, um, and I had a few duplicates, like a Stinger, um, and then I had a Mauler, which is clearly a, a Drac mech. So I figured I'd throw those into the mix as well. Um, but right now, just moving on here, the second red coat, um, really making sure, again, that that line is nice and straight on that Cyclops. Um, any any kind of misses you want to clean up. And we talked about sort of over committing on, on the half when you're doing the white. On the red, it's always better to sort of under commit and then very carefully kind of fill it in once you get um, to your successive coats. And, you know, if there are any tiny like imperfections in the line, you can kind of clean them up um, with a smaller spotter or something along those lines. So uh, here we are, you know, I think we've got two or three coats on just about every one of the mechs and just making sure now that I have nice even coverage and you know you can see there on the mat there's uh, there's a good number of these guys that, that are looking uh, starting to come together looking in pretty good shape here so the next step is after we're done the red right we're gonna start doing the details we have a few different grays that we use um, and we'll talk about that in a moment but I use three different shades uh, to try to vary up um, you know what we've got going on right you don't want all the guns to be the exact same color some of them are uh, sort of a deeper gray or, or whatnot. Um, what I'm doing right now is I was pointing out on the, the Wolverine there was a little bit of an imperfection where I, I went over the line with the red so now I'm just sort of covering it up with a healthy dose of white um, and, and in this case I would go on a little bit thicker to try to make sure I get coverage on the red. Um, this also speaks volumes to not putting too much paint on at any one given time right so with the red I was doing a nice you know, successive coats, right? Three coats, but but thinner, right? That way it dries quicker, so you can correct issues a little quicker. Um, you know, if you go real heavy and wet, it takes forever for the mechs to dry. Um, so anyway, uh, looking good, we're getting there. So before we get to our grays, uh, the first thing I do is I, I take a solid black, it's called pure black is the color um, that I use, and I'm going to start painting all of the things that you know I want to be either black or gray um, so uh, you know these are gonna be like your you know your jump jet exhaust ports it's gonna be like the you know the in, in you know <laughs> the, the random vents um, and things like that the uh, the mesh in the joints right so you know in between the knees and the elbows some mechs have that sort of like accordion like mesh um, other places that you might want really heavy shadows possibly under the arms or um, certain areas of the cockpit. Um, you know, some of the gun barrels, again, um, I, I said this, some of the gun barrels I'm going to start and, and do black. Other ones I'm going to save and paint in a color uh, called Ash, which is like a, a fairly dark gray that has really good coverage. Um, but basically here I'm working on the center torso of uh, the Atlas, I'm trying to get some of that, uh, you know, that, that darker color laid in there. And I'm using a, a 3-0 brush at this point. You can see what I painted was, you know, both of the LRM launchers. Uh, I painted, um, you know, again, those vents in the back, things along those lines. So I'm gonna continue doing that, working on the legs now. So painting around his ankles, um, and then also, you know, behind the knees, right? The Atlas has that sort of mesh back there, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so that's what I am uh, working on, the hip-mounted launchers, things along those lines. All of those things are gonna get um, a darker color. And either, either pure black, I'm sorry, yeah, pure black or ash, is typically where I start and then I'll bring those up with successive um, shades of gray uh, randomly you know on different mechs to kind of give them um, it's still gonna be a consistent look but it'll give them a little bit of appeal um, and a little bit of variation
Okay, so here it is. This is the Atlas uh, reassembled. I got all of the, at least the initial shading done. And again, this is just an initial pass at it. And you can see the mech really comes to life. You got the red, you got the white. Um, you've got that black on there now. And, and here we are with the various shades of gray. So you can see I'm using a, a couple of different colors here. Um, that will become more evident as we sort of progress through the footage here. Working on the stinger now, um, I'm looking at painting up that medium laser and those little, little jump jet ports. back working on this Lancelot and uh, I noticed you know again uh, just one of those little lines there just not quite straight didn't didn't really meet my satisfaction I didn't notice it until now uh, so just kind of going back and taking care of that it's important to get all of these colors on before you do the wash um, at least in this particular case I always wash last that way you know I have the opportunity to kind of go back and make these corrections um, before the wash gets really set, um, I find it a lot harder to kind of make the corrections and make them look natural. Um, the wash kind of brings it all together. So just going back and making some corrections here to that Lancelot. I uh, was very happy with how it turned out, which you'll see at the end. But, you know, it's okay if you have to go back a few steps um, just to make sure everything looks right. Um, but, you know, again, doing the assembly line really helps with these sorts of things you know, kind of starting with one mech and trying to get it all the way through to finish, um, it, it's it's a lot harder to, to kind of make the mechs look consistent. You know, when I'm doing it more stepwise, if I forget a step or if there's something that pops out on one mech, I can go back and check every other one and make sure, um, you know, they, they look good. You know, that way you're not too many steps ahead. And it, I don't know, I just find it easier that way. I get a more consistent uh, look. So <clears throat> the top of the screen, you can see, I have three different grays out now. That ash gray, a medium gray and another color called a steel gray and just using them um, not really worried about switching the brush to be quite honest um, because again you're, you're looking for variation in the color I do rinse it off and use the paper towel in between colors but if a little bit of color swirls together it's okay it gives it you know, a little more of an interesting look and again we're just doing things like weapon mounts and, and those types of hard points uh, antennae um, you know, in, in some cases like the crab, right? I'm doing the claws on the crab. Um, so things along those lines are, are what typically I'm gonna give the black all the way to that white steel gray. All right, so it's some movie magic. We're fast forwarding right to wash time. So I've got all of the mechs satisfactorily done. Uh, all the grays, the red, the white, the line in the center, all real good. Now I always water down my wash. You can see I'm using a black Vallejo wash here. Um, I water it down about 50-50 depending. That's typically where I start. And then you know you can add drops of either water um, or the wash depending on you know on how the how it looks right from the from the start. I, I tend to err on the lighter side and I'm using a uh, a three zero brush and kind of tracing in the lines um, where you would want natural shadow to be. A little trick that I stole from Kevin is, you know, when I'm doing the wash, I hold the mech upside down typically, um, you know, because it tends to run into all the places you would naturally get some shadow. I try to let them dry that way, at least for a little bit on that first pass, that first wash. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll go back and, you know, spot wash, if you will. Uh, certain areas that didn't quite come out right. As anybody, you know, will tell you in a painting tutorial, you typically want to avoid at all costs pooling, right? So 
You see I stood this mech upside down, it's just sitting in my paint tray right in my uh, my palette there, and I'm gonna let that dry, but I'm also keeping an eye on, you know, to, to make sure that there isn't too much pooling around the, the center torso, the upper torso area, um, and, I'll, and I'll clean that out you know, uh, with a brush or whatever when I, you know, when I see that happening. But typically if you use a watered down wash and you're not overdoing it, uh, it it'll be, it'll be all right. But you can see right there, right? I'm just checking it, making sure that uh, there's no pulling, cleaning that up. So you'll notice down there on the, the bottom of the screen, the mauler laying flat on its back. Um, you can see that, you know, that beautiful crisp white that we had worked so hard to put three coats uh, to create uh, is now looking pretty ruddy. Um, you know, the black wash really kind of makes it look a little bit roughed up. So once the wash dries uh, and you'll notice a change in lighting right here, uh, you got to wait until the wash is completely dry. So wait a day, wait six hours, whatever. We're going to start doing what I call a panel highlight. Now this is almost like a dry brush. I do not use wet paint here because it will run down in the cracks. Um, so, you know, use a nice flat brush, uh, keep the paint light. And what you're going to do is you're going to very gently go over, you know, the armor panels and you're going to bring that white back out. So I'm doing it here on the crab, which has a lot of recesses. Um, and it comes out pretty nice. Now I'm working on that mauler again, and you can kind of see uh, I'm not using a lot of paint, and I'm going pretty quick. It's almost like a dry brush, right? And I'm just kind of hitting those major armor panels, you know, the thighs, the calves, right, the arms, um, the, the torso plates, to really bring that color back out. We're going to do the same thing with the red in just a minute. Uh, we're going to actually use a different shade of red, so uh, when we get there, I will call that out. Um, but uh, yeah, again, you know, you can kind of get the gist of what's happening here, just making sure that all of these mechs, again, you know, have that really strong, crisp, white look. But also, you know, sometimes uh, I, I will say it's okay if the mechs look a little banged up, right? You don't always want to give them that fresh from the factory look. So having a little bit of that ruddy appearance is okay. And, and you know, that, that sort of dry brush really helps to get the best of both worlds. All right, now we move on to the red panel highlight. So you saw the side by side. The red um, that I was using for the base coat is a burgundy, uh, and the red that I'm using now for the panel highlight is a crimson. Um, and that is just because I wanted that red to really pop out a little bit more. Um, and so I found that this crimson color uh, for the panel highlight really, really gave me that effect, right? So you still see some of the burgundy, you have the wash underneath of it, so you really get this sort of progressive red color um, that ended up looking pretty good. So just applying that uh, in the same way, um, you know, of course, kind of going back and forth here between some white and the red, uh, cleaning things up as I see issues, but basically applying that red in the same way, 
uh, with that sort of drier brush, with a flatter brush, hitting those main panels, um, uh, the, the flat sections, if you will, trying not to get any paint in the recesses um, so that it you know, all comes out real good in the end. Now, the final piece here is the cockpit. So I use a metallic gold. I know some folks do that gem effect. I don't, um, probably because I'm not good enough to do it, but I just use a metallic paint and that naturally catches the light pretty well, I think. So here I'm using a metallic gold, as I'd stated, uh, and just really taking my time using a, a 010 brush. So, you know, a very small spotter brush. So rotating the mech around, making sure I get it from every angle nice and even, but I want to keep that nice black edge uh, that the wash gave us. So I want that shadow around the edge of the cockpit. And here we are, the finished product, looking real good. So you can see um, how the panel highlight turned out there. So the, the white still pops, it still looks bold, but you can see there's some markings, uh, you know, some scores and, and um, damage blasts, if you will, along the mechs. It gives it that sort of ruddy appearance, but uh, you can still see how clean the, the color comes through. Um, the cockpits, right, reflecting the light as these mechs sort of rotate around. The one step I did not show uh, was painting the bases black. So for some of the mechs, especially the newer sculpts, right, they are fixed to the base. Um, so uh, you just kind of go over that with a, with a pure black um, and call it a day. Um, but overall, I think these mechs looking real good. You can see the cockpit on the, the Cyclops particularly, right, picking up that light on that gold. Um, and moving on now to the next set of mechs, uh, Centurion. Stinger, right? These guys looking pretty good. Um, particularly happy with how the Stinger came out um, for, you know, a little guy. I think it gave a lot of dimension to the mech, one of those original sculpts from the 90s. There's a new Wolverine. Uh, these new mechs, phenomenal uh, with all the levels of detail that you can get. So many lines and the wash really helps bring it out. Um, there's that Lancelot, also looking great. And there's that Crab, one of my favorites in the bunch. Just so much detail and recesses that got pulled out by the wash. Really love how this guy turned out but guys that's a wrap i uh, hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial i know i enjoyed doing it don't forget to subscribe and of course stay tuned there's always more coming from death from above wargaming